So let's assume the lemma is false and that there is some constraint set of edges and there's a component C in this spanning forest and among all the edges with one endpoint in C and the other one not in C, here's an edge E of minimum weight. But let's assume that there is no optimum spanning tree containing an edge E, and we're going to argue to a, to a contradiction. All right, so how do we do that? So what this picture is supposed to represent is we have the edge E shown in dashed red, and here is the optimum tree, which has got a path in it between the two endpoints of X and Y, as illustrated. All right, now, imagine that you start at vertex X and walk along that path in the optimum tree. Now, you might, you start in the component C and you end not in C. So as you walk along, you might be in C, C, not C, not C, C, not C, C, not C, 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 C. This is my Spanish lesson for today. <laughs> Come on, I said, give me a break here. I'm, work, I'm working hard up here and you're killing me. Okay. The point is that as you walk around this path, you must at least once be in C with the next one not in C. And so I'm suggesting that you have an edge F, and that edge F, the first endpoint of it is in C, and the last endpoint of it is not in C. All right, now, we use the exchange principle. You have this spanning tree, T, that's optimum, and here's an edge E that's not in it, and an edge F, which is on the cycle between the two endpoints of E. So the exchange principle says, take out F and put in E, and you have another spanning tree. Now, since your original tree is optimum, that means that you can't have it improved. So the weight of F is at most the weight of E. If, if E was lighter, it would be a better tree. Okay, so it's not. That tells you that when you're looking at those weights, when I look at that edge, when, since I can exchange it, the weight of F is at most the weight of E. But how did I select the edge E? At the moment, I looked at an edge, all the edges, which had one endpoint in C and the other one not in C. Now, F also satisfies that property. So I looked at F, and I didn't choose it. So that means that E is just as good as F, so that means the weight of E is at most the weight of F, therefore they're equal. So, take out F and put in E, and you have an optimum tree because it has the same weight as the original one. And the, the claim was that there was no optimum tree containing E, but via, via the exchange principle, we showed that that's false. Okay, so now that's the real proof of this lemma, and that shows that both, uh, both Kruskal and Prim are mathematically correct and do produce minimum weight spanning trees. Okay, question? Yes, um, if you keep applying the exchange principle to one tree, could you eventually get the least optimal tree? That's a very good question. His question, let me restate it. Start with any spanning tree and then look at all the edges not in the tree. And for every one of them, you know, pick, just pick up one, bam, and this edge is not in the tree, and look at this cycle, and see if there's any edge over here which is heavier than that one. 
And if there is, just put it in. And repeat that process until it, you can't do it anymore. And that will work. Proof. It's on the board. It's the same proof. Not a very efficient algorithm. Not an efficient algorithm. Kruskal and Prim run faster. Because, see, there's no control on how you select those edges. In fact, you might, you might put, in, put in the edge, take it back out, put it in, take it back out many times. So, but, it, but it will work. Uh, if you remember, I made a comment. There are actually many, many spanning tree algorithms that are optimum. And the one you just proposed is, a, is one of them. <laughs>